Conducted energy weapons, also known as CEWs or stun guns, were introduced into Canadian law enforcement in 1998. As of May 2013, there were over 9,000 CEWs in use across Canadian jurisdictions. CEWs use electrical energy to incapacitate and induce pain. To date, there is little consensus on the overarching health effects of the devices. In an effort to better understand what's known as well as not known about the physiological and health effects of CEWs, Defence Research and Development Canada asked the Canadian Academy of Health Sciences and the Council of Canadian Academies to conduct an assessment of the evidence. This was completed by a 14-member independent panel of experts. This was a gathering of world-class experts from around the world, not just Canada, whose expertise allowed an evaluation by them of what science can tell us about conducted energy weapons and what science can't now tell us. I think policymakers are very anxious to have this kind of hard evidence in order to know how to devise policies about when and when not to use these weapons. The body's response to a CEW depends on the electrical characteristics of the device as well as how it's used. While injuries following CEW use have been widely reported in the media, the role the device has played isn't clear given the lack of available information. The panel concluded there are a lack of high-quality experimental data and evidence on actual CEW incidents. The evidence that's available, however, shows that while potentially fatal respiratory and cardiac complications are possible, they would be rare. These weapons are used in very complicated circumstances where a number of factors are important. When these weapons are deployed, the chance of it being the sole cause of a terrible adverse impact is small. It's important for Canadians to understand and for policing authorities to understand that there is a biological plausibility to real adverse impacts from the use of conducted energy weapons. Uh, that requires better science to come to a firm conclusion than we have now. Evidence on CEW incidents suggests many factors may contribute to adverse outcomes. For example, drug use, restraint, and physical exertion. It's difficult to confirm the impact of any single factor in complex policing scenarios. In examining opportunities moving forward, the panel stressed the need for documenting the context and conditions of police use of force. I think it's important to understand that the panel's view was not only do we need more studies, abstract scientific studies about the possible impacts of using conducted energy weapons, but it's also very important that there be a much closer monitoring of the results of using conducted energy weapons in a coordinated way across the country so that that information can also inform the future of policy making about this. The report provides an in-depth and authoritative assessment of the health effects of CEW use. The panel hopes its work will serve to complement other initiatives on CEWs in Canada and abroad. For more information or to download a copy of the panel's report, visit the Council and CAHS websites.